together as a, a family, Heavenly Father, your family, to raise our voices to you and to you alone, Lord God. We call upon you, the mighty man of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. A Holy Spirit move in this place today, God. Let the voices of your people bring fragrance to heaven. Let your word shape us, Heavenly Father, and mold us, God. Heavenly Father, we just ask, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that above all things that we do in this place, that you'd be glorified, that you'd be exalted. So we thank you, we praise you, Heavenly Father, now. As we listen to your voice and your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So the kids, uh, if you want to go to Sunday school, teachers and children, we are going to play a video later on in the middle of the service that you're going to miss. So Sunday school teachers, you want to watch it after, come on out. It'll be great. We'll play it for you. Um, good morning, everyone. Hey, we didn't have to deal with a snowstorm this week. That's good, right? I guess we're spoiled. We have a good January or something. We don't need to... With New Englanders, we should be thinking snow, right? But uh, we're excited to be here. Um, I do want to thank the church uh, last week for coming out. Uh, you know, it was a last-minute notice. We called an audible at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> and uh, we, we just wanted to get together as people, as his children, and just be together and praise him and be in his word together. And uh, we, it was a great time. And we're part of it. was supposed to be previewed this week. So we decided to do two weeks of review. And so you're going to hear some testimonies throughout the service today. I'm going to give you a little bit of my uh, story today about how God got me here. And we're going to share some other things. Um, but this morning we're going to go back to Joshua. I did Joshua, Joshua chapter 4 last week. And we, we talked about these memorials, these memories that God has, that He gives us. And, and last week we talked about how the, the memorial was sent up after he fulfilled his promise to Israel, giving them the promised land. And so this week, we're going to look at the end of Joshua's life. We're going to be looking at um, the memorial and at, at, uh, how they made a covenant to serve the Lord together. So if you would stand with me this morning, we're going to look at Joshua chapter 24, verses 24 through 28. Again, this is in the ESV. If you get your Bibles with you, turn there, or you get the Sky Bible here. Um, let's read it together. Let's start in verse 24. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God will serve, and his voice will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and put in place statutes and rules to them and catch them. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law. talk about us as a people. 
And then we're going to go back to the Bible, okay? So I don't want to be a heretic here. I want to stay in the Word of God. But it's kind of where we're going to go this morning. Um, and last week what we talked about was uh, the memorial was really about God's faithfulness. His faithfulness to Israel. How he provided a way into this promised land using Joshua. In Joshua 4.20 it said, in those, in those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, they set up in Gilgal. And, uh, you know, God, and when we looked at that, a little recap, God gathered the nation of Israel together. It was amazing. By the Jordan. And they gathered there, and on the third day, God did a powerful, powerful work. When you think about the Bible, and you know how consistent God is, what did he do to Jesus on the third day? God shows his power on the third day. When he tells someone to wait upon the Lord, and then he moves, he does amazing things. And he was there to fulfill every promise he ever made to Israel, right then and there. It says how the Ark of the Covenant went before his people. Joshua commanded, the, uh, he told the commanders and the, the Levite priests to hold the Ark of the Covenant and uh, to go before the people. So when you see the presence of God, you actually see this was the stones, this was the, the Ark of the Covenant. When you see the presence of God, he told his people to stand. This is birth of faith. He didn't know what they had for him. We talked about last week how this was rainy season for them. The Jordan was like, you know, it was like you go by the rivers today and how high they are and how fast they're moving. This is the way the Jordan was. He was asking them to stand and walk. He also said for them to consecrate. We saw the consecration of his people. And he said, consecrate because the Lord is going to do wonders to them. We saw something else. It says how the Ark of the Covenant hovered over the waters of the Jordan. And what a picture. Go back all the way to Genesis chapter 1, where it says, God himself hovered over the waters. And even in then, by the very voice of God, what he did, it says he took light and he separated from dark, day and night. It says he took the expanse, heavens and earth, he separated these things. And he took the water and the land and separated it. And these Levite priests walked into a flood of water, high speed flood of the Jordan, and God Himself expands. He separated the waters from the land. And it says that they stood on dry ground. What a picture of God's power, isn't it? And then He said to them to take up the stones, put them on your shoulders, and carry one from each tribe. And we talked about how Gilgal from there, it wasn't like they just took them out of the Jordan and got on the other side and planked them on the ground. Gilgal was about a mile and a half that these men carried these rocks on their shoulders to uh, Gilgal. And the nation of Israel said, pass through the Jordan that day. And, and I had asked the question, do you ever think about how many people literally passed through the Jordan? And I know this is a review for some of you. But if you go to Numbers chapter 26, it'll tell you exactly how many people. It was millions. A people passed through Jordan. So these men stood holding the Ark of the Covenant. It wasn't for five minutes now. They did exactly, they stood in the middle of the Jordan and all Israel passed by the very promise of God, the presence of God, and they stood there for as long as it took. And I don't even know how to calculate that time. But they stood firm, vertical faith. The promise of God. They all passed through. And all this pointed to God, His mighty power, His mighty presence, and His mighty provision. And then He made a statement to the, to the people. And He says, what is this all going to mean? What's all this going to mean? When these people see these rocks that are piled, these twelve, when your children ask in times to come, what all this means. What would you say? What would you say? And it's really about the deliverance of God. It's all about God. So today, that was to rewind a little bit of from last week, but we want to talk about now the last one before Joshua's death in Joshua 24, verses 26 through 47. And he wrote these words in the book of the law. He took a wide stone 
he set it up under the terebin. That was by the sanctuary of the Lord. This terebin is like a giant oak tree. Every time that they would go into the sanctuary of the Lord, they would pass right by these stones. God's provision. And the Lord Joshua said to all the people, Behold, the stone will be a witness. What's interesting, he says, against us. This wasn't a, a memorial for us. He said it's going to be against us. For, all the, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that has been spoken to us. There shall, there, therefore it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your God. The first memorial, faithfulness of God. Now he's calling them to be faithful to him. And, and they knew, and Joshua knew. So as you look at chapter 24, as you read it through, and, and again, I'm going to dip my toe in to this, you know, to the book of Joshua. I'd say read it. Because it's really interesting. And, and what you'll find is, is that as much as our own intent to do the best for God, You'll know from the very beginning that we are sinners. And, and so Joshua chapter 4, and now to Joshua chapter 24, he's calling all Israel to this faithfulness to God. You know, when I look at uh, how we've been talking about this vertical faith, this is what I would say to you. From the very beginning, I think the first week, I said that he's going to ask more of you than you could ever imagine. But yet, It'll be the most exhilarating journey of your life. Imagine being on the edge of the Jordan. Imagine God saying, it's time. And I'm going to do wonders among you. And on the third day, you're with your family. Can you picture this? Moms and dads, granddads, are grabbing the hands of the kids and they're going, where are we going? And, and the Lord said to them, you don't even know where you're going, so stay a certain distance. You've never been this road before. And the faith that we need to walk in this faith. See, vertical faith without walking is just we can believe all we want, but in ourselves we know that we need the power of God. And when we can work, walk in that type of faith, and we can walk in, in this is vertical faith. People saw people just standing and walking. They were following the very presence of God. Ephesians 5 8, what does it say? Walk as children of the light. Walk. You know, we're going to be uh, doing a lot of different things. Next week, I think you're going to be very excited about the preview. And we're going to talk about a new series we're going to be starting. And I've been waiting. So I've been doing a topical series ever since I've been here. Well, that's ended. We are going to be doing a book of the Bible. We're going to be going to 1 Thessalonians. And it talks a lot about this. Children of the light and children of the darkness. I'm really excited to be sharing with you all this. We're also going to see some other things. You're going to hear about missions. You're going to hear about ministry. You're going to hear about a family ready to dedicate their baby next Sunday for him. Okay. You know, there's so many things that God is doing amongst our mess that we can look with our eyes and we can see. We couldn't write this script. But God has great plans for us as his children if we walk and we walk in obedience to him. In Joshua 24, 1 says, Joshua gathered all the tribes to, of Israel to, to Shechem, and he summoned the elders and the heads and the judges and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And as he gathered them, it was a great recounting. This is what he took the opportunity to do. He took the opportunity to review with them. And in the verses, he talks in chapter 24 of, of how God brought Abraham and Isaac into the land of Canaan. He says, do you remember this to these people? People have been sharing. And he talked about how Jacob, and he took his offspring, and he took them into Egypt. But yet, he says, he sent Moses and Aaron into Egypt. He says, he sent plagues. Do you remember this? See, we need to remember this faithfulness of God. And he says, when the Egyptian chariots came upon them in the Red Sea, the scripture says, it took, it, God put darkness in between you and them, and the sea came crashing down on them. Do you remember? Do you remember this faithfulness of God? He says, then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites across the Jordan. He says, this is land I gave you, which you didn't even labor for. 
vineyards you didn't plant. It was Him. It was God. It was God's provision. In Joshua 24, 14, it says, Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him with sincerity and in faithfulness. You know, sometimes we have to take a moment. I don't know about you, but, you know, when we think about our journey and our testimony, I was sharing this at the Bible study, how your testimony, your witness for Christ is truly, truly a gift. It is a gift that you can deposit and throw it in a dumpster if you want. But it's a gift that God gives you. That you can point people to the faithfulness of God. Amen. With your story. And it's a beautiful thing. And he brings them to this place to remember. Remember all these things. This is what got us to the Jordan. <clears throat> now therefore, looking back now. If God did all these things, and is He that powerful to bring down nations, deliver His people? He says you should fear this God. Not simply just fear, but reverence towards Him and devotions towards Him. Can I say that what our culture will tell you, it's not right to be fearing, especially God. But I don't know about you, but have you ever been in a situation, maybe a roller coaster? Which you, which, you know, I don't do roller coasters, but <laughs> you know that big drop? You ever get to a place where you're afraid? Because of the magnitude of what you're experiencing. Imagine seeing these things. Shouldn't we have some level of fear for God? That He can open up the seas, He can crush an army in the seas. How He can deliver a people. Shouldn't we have reverence for should we be so casual that we talk about God like he's like our best buddy? Like he's just like me. Praise God he's not. <laughs> right? But should we be that casual? Should there be a reverence in our heart for him? So strong that with the very presence of God that we'd have the power to stand, walk vertical faith, and live out his faith. This is so important for his children. We need to be children of the light. We're not children of the darkness. Amen. And, and he wants us to walk as children of the light. The Hebrew word is really interesting to serve. It says it's a bad. And this word appears, believe it or not, in chapter 24, 16 times. So this is in fact, which means God wants you to understand this word. This isn't just a, a, a life of works and labor. No, there's something about this word he wants you to understand. 16 times, just in this one chapter. And this word gets the idea. Labor is part of the definition of it. An act for God is another definition of it. It's a lifestyle of faith. So this serve, another word for this, worship. The way that you live, the way that you move, the way that you have your being with God. Worship. This is lifestyle. And the big question Joshua had for the nation that day is this. It wasn't what would you tell your children when they ask you this question. No. He asked them this. Who do you choose to serve this day? He told the whole nation. Who are you really going to serve? You know, you might say, that's a pretty dumb question because you know what? When we're in church and we give you these Christian questions, we always get Christian answers. <laughs> we do. We always say like what we want to hear or something. You know what I mean? Like we always say the right thing. Why was he even asking this question? Because he knew Israel. He knew when Moses went up, they had to make the golden calf. He knew the very heart of these people. He says, who are you really, really, really going to serve him. What would your life look like in an act of worship to God? So we go from the beginning what would you say all this means to you? And then who would you serve? You're either going to serve God or the Bible. I'll tell you that. Or you're going to serve some made up version of God. One that you made up. That he affirms everything that you're doing. That he's just like you. Psalm 50. And when you, when you come to this place, Joshua was, was confronting a nation. Say, who are you really going to serve? Would it be Jehovah, Yahweh, God, 
Adonai? Or are you going to serve some version that you can fashion out of jewelry and say that's the God that we know? That's the God that was fashioned when Moses was with God. Who would we serve? Then basically, they said, he said, get rid of your idols before God. Verse 24, then the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve, and his voice we will obey. And in verse 25, says, Joshua made a covenant with the people. He wrote statutes and rules. He writes them into the book of law. It's sealed. And in verse 26, Joshua sets up a large stone under the terror by the sanctuary of the Lord. That the memorial is visible for everyone who is going into the sanctuary. For the promise they made that day to God. Now I'd say this to you is that this would be a question for our culture today. This would be a question for the American church. Because we're fashioning God in such a way and Jesus in such a way. I shared this at the Bible study on Saturday morning. I remember buying these toys for my daughter when she was very young. That you can have the, you know, Ken and Bobby type of thing. And you can take these clothes, they're plastic, and you can put them on. And we can dress Jesus up any way we want. We can make Jesus look any way we want. And, and, and sometimes, even in the church, we're trying to fashion him to be something that we really want. Something that we experience. Something that, oh, I feel so good. When you leave. The God of the Bible. The God that did all these things. Never came to entertain you. He never came to entertain the church. He called the people to stand. And walk in his faithfulness. And when we can stand and walk in his faithfulness. We are his children. Amen. He is our other father. He's glorious. Now, if you look at us, as we look back a little bit here, um, there's one thing we can all acknowledge together. We all come from different places. Amen? But we're here together. An assembly of believers. An assembly of people seeking God. And we might have all different memories of how you got there. How you got here. And you heard friends already, and you'll hear others. Some good, maybe not some good. But regardless, it is God that you. Know this in your heart. We don't need to give credit to man. It's God that brought you here. And he brought you here for a reason. For me personally, the journey started for Sandy and I on the first week of December of 2017. A clear journey. And in this clear journey, in 2017, Sandy and I attended a marriage retreat, which we attend every year up in Manhattan, just to connect together and be together. And this year up in New Hampshire, the, that we went in 2017, there was no snow, which that was all right with me. <laughs> and, uh, but what they did was really cool. They had this uh, thing that they wanted couples to experience, and it was called a walk to remember. So you walk for quite a distance, and you're walking up the mountainside. And you're doing all this. And along the way, they had uh, these signs. And, and on these signs, they had questions. Questions, it wasn't like you're going to answer yes or no. But as a couple, it really made us think about our relationship, our relationship with the Lord. And so you went through a series of all of these. And the very last question was this. What are you going to do with your life? And uh, it was there that we knew that the Lord had another word for us. Amen. That despite our tears, despite our feelings, that the Lord was asking something of us. And uh, we walked away with a great deal of different emotions as well. And uh, the last day on Sunday before you left, we had service and I stood up front of everyone that was there. And I told them I was leaving the church. That was 2017. 
Basically, we kept it to pray to ourselves. We reached out to some prayer teams for us um, that would keep it in prayer um, and, and to see what God would just do and to make sure that we were accountable to the Lord. And um, we walked away from that weekend like we just didn't know. But upon return home, all the ministries that I was involved with, I started rebuilding them so I could be away from them. So the Lord could still use those ministries. And uh, I thought that was very important to do because I know God is faithful. And uh, in June of 2018, if we fast forward a little bit now. Now, this was all the way from December of 2017. And I didn't know. Every place where I thought I might be going, where God might be sending me, I had been uh, conversations with churches in New Hampshire, conversations with churches in Florida. Um, there was a lot of churches that, uh, and every one of them, the Lord shut the door. And uh, in June of 2018, James Thomason, the pastor of Meeting House Church in Middleborough, he called me out of the blue. He knew me, and I knew him. And as he, he asked me if I wanted to attend a church meeting, um, here in Mansfield, the church name is First Christian Church in Mansfield. And he asked me to come, and uh, they were thinking of merging together, and I had worked with other churches to revitalize them, so he was just saying, Jim, would you just come and listen to see if the possibilities of revitalization. And so it worked out in my schedule that I could go. And, uh, and so I came to that meeting, and... Uh, I'll tell you, I met some very faithful people. In fact, I know there's people here, and I don't want to single you out, but if you were part of First Christian Church, I know there's three right back there. Just stand up for a minute, because I just publicly want to say, please stand up. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Keeping the doors open, doing all that you're doing. And I know Pam's not here today, and I know Pam worked very hard. I want you to know that we love you all very dearly. And, and we appreciate it. And we just pray that we could have the faith, we would have the diligence and prayer like you did. And, and that we could glorify God here. So we thank you very much for that. And so and, uh, I attended the meeting, and a couple of days later, I, I did speak with James. And, some of my feelings of it, and I had some good feelings about revitalization. And um, later on, he uh, contacted me again, and he says, Jim, I'm going to go have another meeting with him. Would you like to come? And I said, sure. I'll, I, if my schedule allows, my schedule did allow, and I went to go see them. And um, and it was good to be talking financials and these kind of things. Just said, sit and listen, and, and that's what I did. And um, I thought it was a great meeting. And um, I, I was moved and, um, by the folks there. And, and some of the things that moved me deeply, and I want you to know this, that, and I'll never forget it, is that they, they were telling me about how their family labored here. And that there was a gospel ministry here. And, and they weren't quite sure about meeting us, for sure. But it was okay. And just what the Lord was doing inside me, and as I expressed it to Sandy, that, that God, we wanted to continue a legacy of faith here. And, you know, it was, uh, it was a great meeting, and I walked away, and then Pastor James called me again. He said, hey, can we go and get a cup of coffee? Let's talk about all this stuff. And he asked me if I would uh, be interested. And what he said to me, though, was he says, Jim, you can take the church. Just take the church. Revitalize the church. And maybe me being a chicken in ways. <laughs> but, and, and it wasn't so much a chicken, believe me, because I've done so many things that, I've, that God has stretched me. I've left many different things, careers that, um, that the Lord just wanted to stretch me and grow me in different areas. But I realized that we did have to eat. And um, we did have to pay a mortgage. Uh, so we came into uh, with meeting house. And 
we went through a series of times just doing a little negotiating and we came to the place of saying, yes, Lord, we will serve you. And uh, on August 19th of 2019, they brought Sandy and I before our old church and uh, laid hands on us and sent us off into ministry. And, and so you know a lot of the other story. And on August 26th, we were here. Uh, first Sunday was a picnic. It was great. Um, and uh, we had a great time. And um, we just knew that as we continued to pray, we felt something here. I researched like people would this area of what type of religious affiliations are in the area. But we felt something different. We felt that there's a possibility that God wanted to do something that people would just be in awe of. Now, I'm not saying that anything about myself because I'm a knucklehead like anybody. Believe me. But we believe that God wanted to have a big impact in this area. And um, so we, we came into agreement, we came into ministry. And um, in the folding, you'll see, I did put the financial statement. I want to be all about communicating to the congregation, by the way. I'm not hiding anything or whatever. And I forgot to bring my copy. Do you have a copy that I could just use for a second? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Trish. Um, when, um, and again, if anybody needs more detail about this, I'd be glad to unpack this because it's been put into categories. There's a lot to go into it. But by the faithfulness of the folks at uh, First Christian Church, that first line item at 5000 that was with, that was the money that was with them. And it went into meeting house. And, um, you know, we just wanted to pray and ask God for everything. You know, so people don't get this idea or puffed up that we can do this on our own. But, you know, since we've been here, what we've seen is God's people respond to the ministry. And the giving here, I just want to say personally, thank you. And, you know, um, we never thought that they could even handle my salary here. Now, I don't make a lot of money. But we just felt like that was going to happen. In fact, we thought our launch was going to be September of 2019. That was our plan. We've already launched, okay? <laughs> We're in but, but you've been very faithful. So that's what I want to say. And from the bottom of my heart, I, I'll explain any of that to any one of these monies. At the end of the day, net net, after the offerings and the expenses that we incurred, there is money, 38979 And uh, we just thank the Lord for that because we want to reinvest that into the kingdom. That's, that's what we want to do with this money. And uh, we're so thankful for that. Um, and as Sandy and I um, pray, you know, as we, <laughs> that poor gal, with the, with the journey she goes with me, but this new adventure we're doing together, we're both so excited. Right? You want to come up here? <laughs> Uh, we, did, we, did, we did feel convicted about very three things, and I want you to know that. And to this day, we stand convicted. First is prayer. We want to be a house of prayer. And we felt that if this was from God, we could depend on all sorts of organizations. We only wanted to depend on God. We, wanted, we knew that He would show up. We remember coming in here early days, very early days with our family, um, our children and our grandchildren. And we sat in these pews all over this, all over this sanctuary here. We sang hymns together. We prayed together. And we asked God. And uh, that he would set this place apart. That he would set this place apart. And there's no accident you're all here today. For sure. And um, we, we prayed that he would bring a people with the same mind and heart. That they would love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul, with all their strength. And we prayed that God would act upon his glory. That the world would know around him that the gospel lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ reigns. Amen. And we still feel, feel very strongly about prayer. That's why we um, we felt we needed to come together in midweek. 
and pray together in our midweek service. We're all invited. And I'd like to read a scripture to you because this was part of Sammy and I's prayer. It was from Colossians chapter 1. And we were praying for all of you, even though we didn't know some of your names. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray that this in order that you may have a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully given thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of life. And that's been our prayer ever since day one here for every one of you and for this church. It wasn't only prayer, but it was about the word. We were convinced that the word of God and the preaching of the word of God is what changed the hearts of people. And we wanted Meeting House Church to be a place where God's word would be held to very high esteem. Amen. And I hope you sense that here. Amen. And to be unashamed of preaching the truths of scripture. And we're going to keep doing it. To teach and make disciples and to raise up another generation of passionate people for the pure word of God. And as a result, that we would be an assembly of people who long for the word, desire it, come to the well to drink of it, to know Christ, the Christ, the everlasting. It's been our prayer that this church would be this type of church. And the last thing I would say is this, and if anybody knows Sandy, it knows me, it's family. We're about family. We feel a very strong call from God about family. With the culture that's redefining everything these days, we feel an urgency to come alongside marriages, equip parents in home discipleship, to provide a safe and holy environment for families to flourish. This is what we feel very strongly about here. Prayer, the word of God and family. And I hope you get a chance to experience all of that here. And as we look back together, God has been so faithful in this journey uh, that he began. Many of you and others for other churches came and started. We were thinking about the cleaning in this church. We, we had a bunch of fun cleaning the church, painting, remodeling, and even more painting. Uh, and churches showing up at our doorstep, donating equipment for us. This is the only work of God. It's been unbelievable. So right now, I have a little short video I'd like to show you to kind of recap some of that right now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
God's grace, more memories to come. Amen? Amen. But uh, I do want to just end this. I know I'm running a little late here, but to know, I want you to know something about Israel. They just didn't come to the Jordan. And God didn't just commission them to serve him. It was a journey. And I, I'd say to you that there were seven memorials in Joshua. And we talked about two of them. But there are many others that I'd, I'd love for you to take a look at in Scripture when you have time. The second one was in Joshua 7.26. It was the largest memorial of all of them. And it was about unfaithfulness. You know, our unfaithfulness to God can be the biggest glaring thing to the community around us and to the world around us. We have got to be strong and stand with the Lord. The third one was a monument to Israel's second chance and restoration. The fourth one was a reminder of Israel's duty to be obedient to the law. And the fifth was a reminder of God's gracious actions in defending Israel. And the sixth was a witness to the unity of all the tribes in Israel. Can I say this? Let it be said of us, church. Let it be said of us that the world would know that we're his disciples by the way that we love one another. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for this day. And uh, Lord, I just ask, Lord God, as we come together in faith and hope and trust, Lord God, that uh, you do uh, much more than we ever could hope or imagine, Heavenly Father. And we just think of your word, Lord God, how you just came with power and might. Lord God. And to know you, to know you with all our heart, with all our mind, and to love you with that strength. God, we just want to pray, Heavenly Father, for everyone here. Lord, for whatever brought them here, God, and whatever experiences, whatever memorials they have in their mind, Lord God, that they would remember your faithfulness. So, God, we just want to pray. Pray right now if someone feels, Heavenly Father, that they don't know you this way. Their hearts feel distant from you, Lord. We want to pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that they be convicted by the very words we spoke today, God. And by that conviction, Heavenly Father, that they would turn their hearts, their minds, their allegiance, all to you, God, calling upon the Lord in their life. So, Lord, we pray if there's someone here that is calling upon you today, Heavenly Father, out of your deep conviction in their soul, Lord, we just pray. We pray that their kingdom would come. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And, you know, I just have one other thing. Um, I want to call up Kylie, and uh, we're a church, we're a family, we want to pray together. We're so excited that uh, Kylie has had this deep, long air heart for our young adults. And uh, she came to me, and she wanted to start a ministry, and I'm so excited about, uh, they're going to be doing the letters to the church for Francis Chan, great stuff, and uh, so this is Kyle, Kyle's going to share a passage, and if you want, I'll hold the mic for you, if you'd like. Well, I just wanted to yeah. give some information about the group first, I know there's a little confusion, um, it's a young adult ministry, so it's going to be 18 and older, and we're going to be meeting here every Friday at 6.30, um, if we meet somewhere else, I'll make sure I communicate that to everybody. Um, like Pastor Jim said, we'll be doing letters to the church. But as I was praying about church and the small group, I came across this passage. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. <laughs> I won't be able to. So it comes from Acts 2, 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And this is just what we pray for, for this church and for this small group too, just that we can build each other up, pray for one another, fellowship, and learn from one another. So, thank Amen. You. So I'm going to have Bobby, if you could pray for uh, the Young Adult Ministry for Kylie, and we could also pray for the offering as well. Right, you if you want to extend your hands to Kylie and for the ministry that the Lord would 